Hi everybody, it's Robbie in Southern California and today is March 1st. It's cold and windy today. Okay, if you're in the East Coast, you probably would be in shorts because it's like 55 degrees. But for me, it's cold and windy. They're predicting rain anytime, so we'll see. But I figured I'm gonna grab my camera. I was working a little bit and get this garden tour done because there are changes coming and a few that have already been going. Look at this, my broccolini. I stuck a small broccolini in this container on this stump here and it is doing beautiful. All that in there, celery, I believe. I don't need all that, so eventually I'll have to get it out because it will hinder other plants trying to grow. There's my blueberries. They're starting to even get some flowers on them and leaves and my onions are going really good. A tomato plant came up in that con uh, container on the chair. I'm freezing. Uh, it's, it's the wind chill factor. It's just blowing on me. And I am mic'd up because I don't think, um, I think the wind would mess up the camera. So today I put a mic on, I hope it's working. Oh, this is where the deer have been coming through and they started to eat my dinosaur kale. There's a whole video on that. And we're gonna to try to get more food for the deer, you know, so keep them maybe out of the garden. But that's pretty much the garden in here, the front yard. Oh, things are blowing over. Uh, here's more blueberries I planted. I figured this would be a really good place for them. And I wanna get one more in there. I think I'm gonna plant one more blueberry in there. So there is gonna be changes. And I am gonna start really getting on here. I've got it, oh, look at that forgot to take that in we were gonna eat that big tomato I want to start really pulling all this out now you know let me go through and answer some questions as I'm going through somebody said to me they have a hard time filling up a container and what's my secret all these stems and branches are going in these containers I literally fill the entire container with so much cuttings off of my own yard that that pretty much fills it so think of it this way. The more you grow, the more you'll have to fill these containers. You know, each season, you have so much more. So all those dead branches from the tomato plant, that's gonna be cut back. Even some of it I can see is still alive. I'm probably gonna cut back most of it. It will all go into a new container or topped on a different container. And from there, I put on top either broken down wood chips, soil from the yard if it's good, because the wood chips have broke down. If you've got rich soil, in your yard you've got some flower pots sitting around there's always I mean, let's look over here there's always a beautiful soil under flower pots i don't know what's here i haven't looked probably nothing no see that this and there's even earthworms this is beautiful soil you could take this soil put some flower pots around in your area you know wherever you've got soil dirt and you'll end up with beautiful soil let me put that pot back because i had not looked there at all um, you'll have beautiful soil you won't have to buy, but if you've got to buy and you are composting in place on your own, you don't have to buy the best soil because your soil, when you cover it, is going to really, you know, turn into all your compost will turn into the best soil better than what you could possibly buy. So get whatever you want and top it, plant your seeds in it on top of all your kitchen scraps, your your leaves that you pick from the garden, like a lot of the Swiss chard, that hanging leaf is gonna come off and go in my container. And that will all break down into beautiful soil. This is what I'm excited about. Okay, yes. I, I don't know what this one is, but I planted one zucchini seed over there and it grew. And I literally put that in the ground about four days ago and it popped up that quick. And that's telling me those other ones, probably came out of my compost and they shouldn't be there. But see the difference? You can see how big this is. They all just popped up. That's zucchini. So that's telling me that spring is here and I can start to plant. So I'm very, very excited about that because I've been waiting for spring. We are cool today. The weather here on March 1st is cool and they've been talking about it all week. It dropped 20 degrees in two days. But, and that's what happens. You get acclimated to the warm weather and then all of a sudden, bam they tell you you're dropping 20 degrees. The thing is, it's only gonna last a day or two and then we're going back into the 70s. So it is time for me to really get into all this. I compost it in place in this front container here. I'm going to pull a lot of that out where that gnome is because that's all root bound mint. Replant it because mint gets root bound right away in a container and then it will really hinder its growth. 
So when you pull it out, break it in half, you'll have two or three different mint plants or more, put it back, it will just take off and you'll have beautiful, beautiful mint. So I've got to redo a lot in the front yard, but all in all, everything's going good. And this is just a bunch of cuttings I put in this pot and they're doing really good. I can move them whenever I want. Uh, looks like it's probably purple sprouting broccoli cuttings. And then in here, I'm starting to work in here and this is where the deer have been coming. Did the video on that. They have been pulling this soft tool off. This is a softer tool than this. And they got a taste to dinosaur kale. Now look, it's already coming back. So it's not a big loss. So they did their thing, they came through, they ate it, all gone and they left. So we'll see what happens if they come back. They were so beautiful to see. Six of them, I told the whole story already in a video, a short video. I was, I'll talk about it when I get there. Let me, let me talk about it when I get to the truck bed. This I need to clean up also. This is the chair. And I want to show how you could grow so much food in one container on a chair. Chair, I, you know, just a cheap chair. You find them in the trash, side of the roads. And then you could set it up. I've got, oh, my stevia is coming back in there. That's stevia. This is all, of course, Swiss chard. And got some, I see some walking onions coming back because it's been cold. This particular area is, to be honest, is really a bad place to put a chair. But that's where I wanted to put it. And I'll have to think about what I really want to plant in there. Why is it a bad place? Not because it's by the front door. Because it doesn't get any sun. And I've talked about that before. See this little span here? It barely gets that much sun. That's all it gets. And then it drops past the house. And look, it's still, the sun is way down there, still coming up. And it will have to go through the trees. So it gets very little sun. The Swiss chard does really good with very little sun. But tomatoes, they really prefer some sun, but I mean, I can't complain. Look at all the tomatoes it's still growing. It just needs to be groomed and I have not groomed it, but I will. But think about, you know, getting a chair. If you've seen the chair in the trash or on the side of the road, or sometimes you can go to the thrift store. Let's keep walking. Go to the thrift store and they've got them for a couple bucks. Look at all this. I can't wait. I'm going to trans transfer this garden into something really pretty and really productive. Yeah, if you find a cheap chair, it might be worth trying because you pick up a chair for three or four dollars, you could get a lot of food growing. This all here too, even though there's a lot of tomatoes on here, I think this plant is done. And what I'm going to do here is, I'm not going to pull the soil out, but I'm going to compost in place in these containers. See, this is mint, this is peppermint, and it's root balm. So I need to get in here, it's even come up in the other pot, I need to get in here and cut those roots in half. It doesn't need all the roots and maybe set up some more peppermint in different areas. But I mean, it's alive. See, it's trying to make a comeback, but I need to really separate that. So I'm gonna get these all prepped. But yeah, I'll get some more squash or something or tomatoes. The tomatoes did well here because they still can catch the sun past the house a little bit. And as the sun goes up for summer, they get more sun. So they did really well. So I'm gonna do that. Let me swing you around. There is my ginger, turmeric, and stevia table. I've got all my turmeric already planted that I wanted to. My black turmeric is in the back room. Gary took that. And then this is all ginger. So I'm doing both right now. And I might plant a little bit more. And I've got to get this in the ground too. My purple tree color that I bought online. I want to get that in the ground very, very soon. But it, that, is, that one did really, really well. But look at the stevia. Now, Remember this, because we're going to talk about stevia in about 15, 20 minutes. But keep in mind, look at this. See how short it is? Okay. I had two more stevia plants here. Now keep in mind, look at that stevia. It's not even coming past the pot yet. It looks beautiful, but it's not coming past the pot. Now just remember the stevia, and we'll be back and talk about the stevia in a few minutes. All right, let's go into the garden through the gates and see what is or what will be going on. Well, now we're in my main garden. This is terrible. The wind is blowing and my hands are frozen like ice. And uh, I'm stumbling on my words. I'm so cold. But anyways, oh, I want to sit and watch. I've got bush tits and I've got uh, gold, goldfinches in there and warblers taking a bath. I could sit here all day and you don't want to see that. You can see that on another video if you want to see it. Okay, what's going on here? This is green sorrel. Something ate it, and I wasn't sure what, so I put one of these baskets on. 
Now these are trash baskets that you can find at the dollar stores. I've seen them at almost every type of dollar store I've gone to. The 99 cent stores, Dollar Tree, even independent dollar stores have had those and they're a dollar. I've cut the tops off so this way they're more flexible. Let me show you here, see? And then once you cut the top off with the wire cutters or scissors, they, they even cut with the scissors, you could push it onto other flower pots any of your plants, any plant in the pot, and you cover it and nothing can get to it. I mean, something very tiny still could, but it works perfect. That all grew back. I thought it was dead. There was nothing left. If you look back at the old um, garden tour I did a month ago, it looked like it was dead. Well, it's all coming back. I even pushed in a little walking onion. So keep that in mind. If you're planting in flower pots and you've got an issue, just get a couple of these trash cans and they last forever. They're just a wire waste basket and just cut the top. If you don't cut the top, it's not flexible, so it won't fit. See, there's another one down there. It's um, protecting my oregano. And the same thing, once you cover it and you cut the top, it will fit on anything. If it fits and you don't need to cut it, then don't cut the, uh, the wire rim off. I should do a, a video. I believe I did do a video on that. But if you cut it, then it's flexible and you can put it on a smaller one, a bigger one, any of them. So it works really good and my green sorrow is making a comeback. This is that container that Gary found in the trash. Somebody threw it away. It was some sort of cabinet or something. I don't know that you put things in. And I've grown so much stuff over the past three years in this. It's unbelievable. So it's pretty much all prepped and ready to go. I have been chopping out my dinosaur kale. Not all of it. I let it grow against the fence here. That I'm going to let it do. But the pieces that were coming out towards me I couldn't walk. I did, and I know it's badly damaged, but we'll see if it makes it through another year. I took all that out and I chopped it up. Now remember, if you want something to break down quicker, cut it smaller. If you don't care, like let's say you're filling up a, a new tub to compost in place, you could take big branches and throw that on the bottom. It gives good water drainage and space on the bottom. Uh, so and just put stuff on top so it wouldn't matter as long as it fits in there and lays on the bottom but if you want it to break down quicker see what i've done here i've chopped it smaller so as i was cutting it down i chopped it smaller and it's already breaking down really really well it'll break down quick and remember i always say anything on the very top will not break down it's going to break down right underneath so if you want that to break down Get some soil from your yard, buy some potting soil or garden soil from the store and put that on top and then all that will break down almost instantly. Within weeks it will start breaking down so fast and you plant in it right away. You don't have to wait. I, I don't wait. I plant in it right away. When I'm ready, I plant. But this is what's going on in, in, a, in here in this part of the yard. I'm probably going to move the red container because I did a video on that that I was going to use that and designate that container to be a container that I can dump kitchen scraps in or leave, especially when we're into mid and late spring, when I don't know where to put it because everything's growing, in there. But then last year I grew squash in there because it came up from the kitchen scraps. So we'll see what happens, but I'm gonna clear all this out because I want it easier for me that I can just walk in here and walk around. That's the whole idea and be able to get to everything because I couldn't get to this back wall area. And that's just something that I don't even know. It's dinosaur kale cuttings in there. So I'm going to clean all this up. I'm going to put some more floral pots in the ground and set that up and get different things going. Probably within the next week or two. I'm already starting to work. This is the container I set up last year. I had tomatoes in it. And then, of course, the dinosaur cutting. These are all cuttings. Look at how big this thing is. That's growing in that flower pot there. So I'm going to kind of clean all this up. I've been collecting the stakes around the yard. And so this way, when I go to look for one, I don't know where one is, I'll know. Same thing here. I'll probably straighten out this dinosaur kale that's leaning over and I wanna make everything accessible so I can get in there. Boy, it's windy. It's gonna start raining any time and I'll have to run in and get a different camera because this camera is not for the rain, it will fry. Um, I wanna be able to have access to a lot of it. I couldn't even get back here before, so I couldn't control my purple sprouting broccoli and it, it did literally go out of control. Probably going to do a lot of cuttings off that. I still have seeds. 
you know how I grow my seeds. I only grow what I need. So I still do have a lot of seeds and I should start some more seeds. But this is one plant. There's only one plant of purple sprouting broccoli. Came out of this pot. I couldn't get back here. It just took off and went up and up and up. Then it sent out all these shoots. And then of course I've got the top there. I left the seeds for the birds. No, I did not collect the seeds. And the reason is, isn't that beautiful, the birds? Um, the reason is I've got so many other plants in the same family growing, collard and dinosaur kale and curly kale and sprouting other sprouting broccoli. They will all interbreed and you'll end up with something you have no idea what it is, which is fine, but I didn't bother collecting the seeds. I left the seeds for the birds and the birds would come, the goldfinches and other birds too, bush tits. The bush tits are collecting insects mainly. The goldfinches are doing both. They're doing insects and the seeds. They like tiny seeds. So we'll see, but this should transform differently than what you've been seeing. And then more red vein sorrel, if you're wondering what that is. Those were actually off of my one plant I had. I broke it apart and you just go in there with a shovel and dig a shovel in there and you take off pieces of it and plant it. And that's from last year. And look how beautiful that is. Now this year for the first time, I shouldn't say this year, last year, 2019, it went to seed. So I've got babies all over. Here's another, let me show you over here. Now this is a piece of uh, tree collar growing that I'm gonna have to figure out where to put. But see, look here, this is seeds. I took one of the little babies that were underneath the mother plant and I put it in a pot and it's doing really well. Now I can lift that pot up, sorry. I can lift that pot up and I can move it anywhere I want. And this again is all celery. I'm gonna to have to go through it. Sprouting broccoli pieces that I just put in here. And these are cuttings, so I can move that as well. That's walking onions. And this is just collard, plain old collard. And then a tomato plant. And these are all cuttings. These are all different dinosaur cuttings in there, kale. Just put a pot there, kept, keep it well watered, and just shove them in there pieces and they've been growing. So that's how easy it is to do cuttings. So I have been taking and doing different things and trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with this because I don't wanna leave it that way. And then of course my pepper, we dragged it out here, but it's so cold today, it's not happy. Pepper plants don't like the cold. Lemon verbena died back now, isn't that interesting? It grew all winter and it's starting to die back now. And I, oh, and here comes the new growth already. I did not see that yesterday and look at that, new growth. So I wanna trim this back. And what I'm gonna do with this is anything that's coming out, I wanna trim it back and I wanna direct it that way. Let me step back. The reason I wanna direct it that way is I wanna be able to use this table here because I still want a table to sit and enjoy all the birds that keep coming. And I don't wanna grow into me and I don't need that much. You know, we make tea out of it. I take spearmint that we grow a lot of spearmint around here. And I use that in with lemon verbena and some stevia and it makes the greatest tea but I don't need it growing into me because I've got lemon verbena growing there. I have another one on the other side of the yard. And then of course, Gary's got a lemon verbena I gave him. So it's growing really good. I mean, can you imagine? These birds are seven feet from me, I would say, and they don't care. Probably too, because the weather's cold. They figure they'll come here and hang out and eat. Isn't that cool? I am looking at some birds because I think I see a different species I was looking for. Isn't that amazing? We have got in front of you, you're looking at, you've got white crowns. I think one is not a white crown. I'm going to have to look that up. We've got house finches. We've got gold finches. We've got some bush tits in the back there. We've got a fox sparrow and a songbird. And I hear a crow in the background, but not here. Oh, they're up in the air, flying by ravens actually. But these birds are all right here and they don't care. They don't care, just like the deer that came out right next to me. They didn't care, it was so amazing. Yeah, I'm just looking at all the birds. Okay, I have to stop this, because the birds stopped me in my tracks and then I just watched them. But anyways, I am gonna trim that back. I was thinking of moving it, and the possibility, let me show you how easy it would be for me to move. See, it's in a pot, so I could, it would be disturbing the roots, but I could just pull that pot out, and the, there's more cuttings and stuff back there too, and the mushroom plant is back there. We've got celery coming up, onions, garlic chives, more different um, dazzling blue kale back there. I think you can see it. But going back to lemon verbena, I could just yank this thing out because it's in a container. Holes on this container you can see are not on the bottom. 
Let me repeat that so you see that. The holes in this big green container are not on the bottom. Because they're not on the bottom, I could easily yank that up and move that pot. I could cut that pot and split it if I don't want to leave it in the pot or leave it in the pot, dig a hole somewhere, maybe in the ground, don't even container garden it, but leave the pot so when I water it, just cut the bottom of the pot out. When I water it, it the water will go directly to the lemon verbena. And I may do that too if I find the place I want to put it. That's just a beautiful plant. But because the holes are not on the bottom, I know for a fact those roots have not left this container. So it'd be really easy to move it. Absolutely easy. So I'll have to see. Now, why are the roots not leaving? Because they can't go out of the holes when they're like one and a half inches from the bottom. That was done because we didn't want, I did not want pepper tree roots in there or pine tree roots in there. There's different reasons why you put your holes in different places. Let me keep walking. And that, I think I'll need to discuss. We'll do a lot of discussions on different topics. I've got all kinds of topics I want to talk about. So we'll talk about that. There's a reason and there's a strategy to why you would put holes on the bottom, why you would put it maybe on one side, why you would put it on two sides, maybe only three sides, maybe up, maybe down. There's all different reasons. You could do it any way you want. Whatever is going to work for your garden. If I got into that now, I'd be talking for another hour. So I'm going to continue the garden tour and we'll talk about that in another video. But I do have all these containers set up differently. When I have a container like this, that one, again, not on the bottom. But then I've got other containers that do have their holes on the bottom. It will work no matter where you put it. But you want to put the holes where it's going to work the best for you. For food production as well as for many other reasons. So like I said, let, we'll get into that, a whole topic on that. These are all my bird feeders and what my plan is, is my daughter got me during the holidays a beautiful stand to put bird feeders on. And I do want to keep this, but I'm going to put it in here, set it up. And because I do like sitting here and having coffee here, I want to set this up where it looks really, really pretty. Because making it look pretty is still not going to stop the production of anything. I don't want to stop the production of food but I think it will just be, it's nice, you know, coming into the garden, it's less stress. And I think there's really easy ways to make it look pretty. Remember, a lot of this is dead from winter. We're still in winter. So once it's all clear, cleared out, it will look good, but you can make it look pretty and productive. And that's what I'm gonna work on. Here's the bird feeder I made that is squirrel proof. Oh, that was funny. Gary came in the other day. He said to me, you know your squirrel proof feeder? Because the squirrels get into those. I go, yeah. There's a squirrel sitting in it. Yeah, I said to him, and he goes, well, there's a squirrel sitting in it. I know, why? Because I set it up over here. I had it sitting up against my, this old strawberry tower. Of course, he climbed onto the strawberry tower and just climbed on. I said, no, I knew that. I needed it out of the way. And like I've talked about, placement. He hasn't been able to get to it here. Even though it's only about four feet, he hasn't been able to leap. He doesn't want to leap on something that's gonna move. He doesn't want to do that. If he jumped on that and it moved like that, he would run. But when it was put into one of these flower pots over here and it had it up against this, all he had to do was climb on this and climb straight in. It was funny, but I knew that because I needed, I was working here and I needed it out of the way. So these things just pull up and move so easy. I love these feeders. I want to make a whole bunch more. And these are good, of course, but you know, the stump, oh, there's a squirrel sitting in it half the day. And the same thing, if that one gets empty, he just goes over here and he's not in this one too often because it's harder for him to get into but it's right off the ground so he climbs on this and he can actually almost reach so you, it's kind of like you just have to think about what they're doing and and how they're getting into things let me back up for a minute kitty's garden is doing really really well this is all lettuce seed here all this is lettuce seed so i'm really really happy with all that and we'll be right back. This is lettuce seed and this is, I'm not sure, see this might be a hybrid kale and it might be a cross between dinosaur kale and collard because it's got those elongated leaves. So I'm not sure, but we'll freshen this up with some more leaves and we'll see how it all goes. It's doing pretty good. We've got Swiss chard coming up, both red and green. So I think our garden's doing really good. And remember hole placement I talked about? 
I only have the holes here, so when I water that container, it goes into there. So it works out really good. It's doing double duty. Okay, let's keep going in the garden. So here's my water fountains. You know, I'm thinking of starting in the summer, maybe doing just a tour, on a light, instead of a garden tour, a solar fountain tour. I think that would be fun because I've got so many ideas of fountains I'm going to be making all spring and summer. I can't wait. I've actually started some and they're coming out fantastic. There is my water fountain I happen to really love. Bought, that was my first fountain I bought for the yard. Got that at a thrift store. Love that fountain. The hummingbirds love it. Everybody loves it. But anyways, in here, going back to the garden, this is a collar, plain old collar. See that? This is sprouting broccoli, and it went to seed, and I'm leaving that for the goldfinches and the birds that want to eat it. But I will be cleaning a lot of this up, including the collar that's growing around the fountain. That's going to seed, too. And we'll see how that goes, because I want to be able to have access to a lot of things. And that's one thing I don't. Now, I noticed the mint, that's spearmint all over the bottom. The spearmint, it really stayed green all winter. And I think it's because there's so much water here and there might be warmth from the ground. And it's, and it's got shelter from the water fountain. So maybe it stayed warm and that's why it could grow all winter and stay nice and green. And yes, that is a hummingbird right in front of me. They don't really care like three feet from me. They don't care. And they'll buzz my head when their feeders are empty. So I've got the fig tree coming up behind it. I'm thinking of trimming that down. It's full of figs already. I was going to trim it down before the figs started to grow on the top. Um, I want to have this a little bit more open, but we'll see how time goes. You know, and it, it's my time and just go through it as much as I want. This is all spearmint. I am going to trim it back. You know, it may be an invasive plant but if you really wanted to you could just grab it in the wood chips here and just pull it it would come right up i don't mind it but i do keep it cut low in the summer or when the weather warms up due to snakes that's all and it's the rattlesnakes i care about i have yet to see a rattlesnake in my garden that we grow all kinds of mint this is that curry plant look how big it got it took over the entire container it was in a small pot and it's growing in there. I haven't even cooked with it yet. It feels and looks a lot like rosemary, but a little softer. And it smells like curry. I uh, just haven't used it, but you know what? I saw it at the nursery and I was kind of interested in it and I bought it a couple years ago and it just keeps growing. Red celery, this thing died back. See, here's the seed stalk. Chopped it back down and it grew back. So if you've got celery you don't, and you're in an area where it's not getting a lot of snow or anything, you could just chop it back and it will come right back usually from the roots. That one did. I'm gonna prep this area too. Here's my original red vein sorrel plant. This is the original one. Remember, leaves are not trash. They go right back. And this is the one I just took chunks out of and I started growing it in the front yard in different places. But look at all the baby plants. That's from the seeds. That too, this is all seeds growing in here. That too, everything is seeds. Isn't that cool? It was the first time it grew seeds. I think it's a two-year-old plant, and last year it had a seeds. It didn't the first year, but it developed seeds and the seeds are growing. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, still prepping. See, I'm putting leaves in all my containers. Let's see what's underneath. Okay, look at all the earthworms down there. And there's even grubs down there. Let's move it back. You could lift this, there's holes on the bottom, and you could move it if you were, let's say, growing in the ground, you could move it right next to something, another plant you like. Then you water the top, you water it inside, keep throwing your kitchen scraps in there, and the compost tea just goes directly to your plant. So you can move those anywhere. Right now it's staying there. I think I'm gonna move it because there's so much stuff in here I've been putting in all winter, that once I top it with something or it breaks down, I won't really need that, so I might move it where I really need it. And there's that tall tree colored. Can you imagine? That thing must be about 15 feet tall. Really big. I really should be topped. We have so many purple tree colors now we want to get in the ground that Gary bought. I don't know. It's just so big, but you know, it's such a beautiful plant. But, you know, this really is good because it gave me an idea when I go to plant in my garden where I want to put it. 
And it also gives me an idea that I have to think about where I want to put it because it will block the sunlight. That's how massive. Now that one back there did not. Why? I don't know. That's how big it got. And then there's another one back there that, well, that one got tall. So why did one grow? And there's another one. See, I don't know. Why did one get so big and the others didn't? Now, let's walk over here. But this was also a compost bin. So I was composting in place in here and growing at the same time. Holes are on the bottom. So it was leaching into the ground, all that compost tea. And this got extra nutrition. And that could be why it got so big. They were all planted exactly at the same time. So that's got to be why it got so big because it's catching all the nutrients coming out of that container. And of course, even this one, this one's got to be all cleaned up. Um, it's catching the nutrients out of both of those. And that could be the reason why it's doing so well. If you want to call that well, it's just so big. It's kind of out of control. I mean, look at the branches. They took off that way. There's branches took off that way. I'm hoping down there it's going to set root and then I can cut it off the mother plant and have a new plant there. So that's what it is. That's why I'm saying if you made a compost in place travel container out of a bucket, you could just lift it, sit it next to a plant that maybe isn't doing that well. Don't have to do anything else. You don't have to dig it in the ground. Just sit it next to the plant, throw your kitchen scraps in it, water it, and remember anything that's coming out, all the water coming out of the bottom of the bucket is plant food and it will continue to feed your plant. Remember, anything underneath immediately starts to break down. And it's going to feed your plant a constant food source. So that's probably what's going on with that one because the container that was there, I threw so much kitchen scraps in it and leaves and branches that it all broke down and it gave this plant the best food source it could possibly get. So it's about 15 feet now. Still working, like I said, all these containers. Let's step back here is, and look, eggplant. I've got eggplant. We've been picking eggplant already. I've got a couple of them on here. So all these containers are going to be prepped. See, I'm starting to throw all the leaves in there. But here's the eggplant. Yeah, I've been picking quite a few eggplants already. And I've been putting that on the pizza. Gary likes it on his pizza. I don't. He likes all kinds of stuff on his pizza. He has me crack eggs on it. And I don't know. It must be an Australian thing. Um, anyways, sweet potato. All this is coming out. The sweet potato grew in here from the compost from the kitchen that I put in there. I don't want the sweet potato. The beans are growing. That is really cool. I did shove the old beans in there that I found and put them in that pot. So I'll freshen that up. I haven't done anything yet here. And then, of course, all these. I think I'm going to rip all these out and get it more productive. It's really not doing anything for me. In here is chocolate mint and, of course, the dreaded strawberry mint that doesn't really like the winter. I think um, I'm going to probably redo this too. It doesn't need to stay in that pot and I do want to redo all this. It's just there and I, I want to kind of clean that up a little bit and then well all of it's got to be cleaned up and I've just been waiting for the weather to kind of warm up and get signs that it was time. Let me keep walking and now that I see the, squ the squash seeds coming up, the zucchini that I planted straight into the ground, just shoved the seed in there, that's telling me it's time. That's the other bird feeder we've got here. This is a dog crate that my brother gave me that he found. And we have the door open here. Now they can go through the wire. They don't need to go through the door, but here's the thing. If they're sitting there feeding, be it doves, the birds can sit in there and eat safely because a hawk cannot swoop in there and get them because of the bars. I actually saw a video online of a guy posted at his bird feeder a hawk catching one of his birds. Now that is nature. They catch them in the trees. You can't stop it because that's what they eat. But here he can't do that. He has to swoop and there's no way to swoop. If he tried to do that, he'd break his neck. He won't even try. They have wonderful eyesight. So this way they're fully comfortable in here to sit and eat the birds and they know they can't be taken and then they can just go through the wire, go into the plants and fly off. So it works really good. There's the papayas. Looks a little bit sad and I think that's because we went through some more very cold weather and that's one thing it doesn't like is cold weather. So and wind, I see a leaf got snapped. Okay, let's see. So back here, I'll freshen up my strawberry tower or move it. I've got ideas and then this is the moringa that's coming back. 
I showed you that in the last garden tour. February 1st, it started to make a comeback. Gary trimmed some of the branches. The problem with the Moringa here, and again, think of placement when you're doing your garden, as beautiful as it is, I can't grow any squash or anything here. Because when that tree fills out, it shades this whole area. And it's too shady for certain plants, especially squash likes a lot of sun. So I'm not sure how many Moringas I want to plant like that yet. Here's another one. I trimmed it a little. It's starting to come back. But see the soil? How bad the soil is? Gary had a container here and I asked him if he could move it. That's the soil. That's just hard clay. So what I'm going to do here to help this tree, I am going to trim it back a little bit more. Let me step back my camera. Can't do much else than that. Okay, I'm going to put a container there. And when I have a container there with the holes it directed towards this tree, it will help feed this tree and water it. Now, I want to step into this room and show you something that we talked about in the beginning of this video. Let's walk into Gary's, Gary's uh, little greenhouse, his little haven. Look at this. Look at this. What do you see here? What do you see here? Look how tall this is. It's a good 12, 14 inches. Look at that. These are my stevia that Gary took from the front. Okay, this one had a little tiny one that we, I didn't even know there was a stevia in here. In this room, it's warmer. They grew. I'm, oh, wait a minute. Here's another one. I didn't even know there were that many he pulled. But look at that. I'm amazed how big they are. And then I went to the front and looked at it. I saw it the other day and I said, oh my gosh, Gary, have you noticed how big they are in the back room? He said he really hadn't paid attention. The one in the front yard, which was a beautiful big plant, that one stayed tiny all winter. But these grew. And that's what's going on back here. Look at this. He's got Malabar spinach growing. A tomato seed got into this tray. So, but I wanted to share the stevia with you because to me, that's an important find that you can, if you've got a place, take your stevia in for the winter when the weather gets cold and then you can put it back outside when spring comes. And you'll be able to have stevia, those sweet, beautiful sugar leaves in your tea all you want. Obviously, Gary's been ripping off some of the leaves because he puts it in his tea and that's perfectly fine. That's what it's there for. So that was an excellent find that you can grow it as a house plant as well as Moringa can be grown as a house plant. I have found that the best way to grow it for me, maybe you've got a different way, is by seed and direct planting. When we have grown them, close this door, I don't want birds in this room. When we have grown them and transplanted them, they went into a transplant shock. And we can go through the gates as I talk. We went into, they went into transplant shock. So what we started to do was a little different. We either direct put them in the ground, the seeds, which worked really good. And there's methods and ways you can do that so nothing eats the baby seedling coming up. Or you can start it in a pot, like a paper cup method that I use. And you can put it that way. And then the pot and all in a paper cup, because like these papayas, they busted right through the plastic pots. The Moringa is so big it will bust through the pot and it will never know it was transplanted and it will never go into shock. Okay, let's walk around the back now and check out the papayas. So the papaya tr uh, plants here, they're not trees, but you know, we call them trees because they're so big. They're doing quite good. He's got a couple that went kind of bad. He was going to pull them off. He hadn't pulled them off yet. Probably because of the weather, we've been so damp, wet and cold. So some of them aren't doing good. The, the ones that are kind of small and yellow, so those will you know, be gone. But the other ones will do good as the weather warms up. Look how beautiful they are. And again, you've seen them a hundred times on the garden tour. They're planted in pots. That one busted the pot and went over, but now he's starting to get to the point where he's staking them because he doesn't want this to happen. Here's another one in the pot. And they will leave the pot. Their roots are massive, so you don't have to even transplant them. Here's another one, and he did stake this one. So they'll leave the pot and they'll just take off their roots, but they get direct watering. And I think that's why they're doing so well, because when I water the pot, even in the hot summer, I know they're getting water. They're getting perfect water. 
because when you water the pot, it's got to go directly down to their roots. It can't just take off in an underground river and run off somewhere else where they don't get the water. Because if you've got gophers or moles or even insects underground, they can create I'm going to call it like underground rivers, like a freeway. So you may water your plant and you think, gee, I'm watering it. Why is it drying out? Because when you water it, the water may be going who knows where. It's just taking off. But when you water it in a pot like that and their roots have left, they're getting the water. No matter what, they're getting water. So it has worked out really well. And of course, like I always say, they are heavy feeders papayas. The papaya plants need a lot of food. So if you've got papaya plants and you're not having success with fruit and you should have success right away, get a compost container like I do. Check out some of my past videos on how I compost in place if you're not doing it already. And direct the water flow from your compost container to your papaya and you will have success. Almost no doubt you'll have success because they'll be getting all the nutrients out of that container and it will be feeding them and they'll produce tons, tons. I mean, we get so many papaya on these, it's unbelievable. And then we've got some on another part of the property we're growing. It's just unreal how many, many papayas. I would never have believed a few years ago we'd be growing papayas like this. So that's the whole thing with them is lots of food and the food doesn't mean you have to buy it. The food is leaves, kitchen scraps, any food matter that's gonna break down, it's the microbes their droppings and all that that's really feeding and it's the whole science to it but it's all nature feeding the plants so just get some containers and compost in place right next to them all of them here if you as you can see have a container next to it and you just continue to throw leaves in their own leaves too throw leaves and everything in there and it will feed the papayas all right now let's go see what's missing from my wall Yes, my bathtub is missing. We'll walk over and talk about that in a minute. He took everything out and I'm gonna line my containers here and compost in place here. He built me these wooden raised beds, but you know what, wood breaks down and to me, the containers are just so much easier. So much easier. They last probably longer than the wood does. And the other thing is, I have more control over each container. So I like having more control over it. I have control of water. I have control of where I want the water to go. This is my Moringa coming back. Isn't that cool? It's got a lot of leaves already. So I like that. It, everybody's got their own way of doing it. It just works for me. That's the eggplant full of flowers. I've got a container in there and I've got, see back here? It didn't really grow that good, but I set this up with chocolate mint and I had chocolate mint. Look how beautiful it is all winter because it's up against the warm wall. This is a microclimate. So it worked out. It didn't grow vigorously like it does in the late spring and into summer and fall because it likes the warm weather but it stayed alive, didn't die back. These are all my squash plants. Did that whole video on it. I hope to get them set up correctly. I am taking all the squash now and just dumping leaves and all back into all these containers. I haven't, as you see, I haven't done them all yet. That's, I forgot to take that one off, so it got badly sunburned. I have so much, I had, I should say, so much zucchini this, this uh, past 2019. A lot of them I just didn't even pick, which is fine. I'll have seeds from them or it will be great compost. Believe you me, the, any fruit you don't eat is great compost to put back into it. So I can start putting all that back in there. I'll test it. I'll open it up. I could always bake it or something. But this is going to be all the way probably across containers. I picked up a whole bunch one day at my thrift store and they had them really cheap. So I'm going to continue and put the containers across. Now this past summer I never I started setting these up and I never got soil in them I was throwing all the leaves and everything he's yelling at me I don't know if you can hear that but this is who it is hold on yeah it's just that small hawk flying around he, he sees me and doing my garden tour 
and he's just yelling at me. I don't know. They do that. A lot of the birds do that. But I'm going to kind of uniformly set it up because, like I said, this past summer, I never got soil in it. I started throwing leaves in there, and I was composting kitchen scraps. And then I ended up with all these containers growing squash in them, and there was no soil. The only thing that was in there, and I grew lots and lots. They were high, a lot of them came out hybrids, but they were beautiful squash. All of it was growing straight in the matter that was breaking down. That's really all it needs. But I mean, this is what everything is when you think about it. Everything falls on their plants and then seeds fall and they grow. That's what they're growing in. They're not growing in the soil that's four, five, six inches deep. They may be setting roots in there later, but in the beginning they're growing in all that breaking down matter. Well, that's what all this did. It all grew strictly in kitchen scraps and, and leaves. And a lot of it was mainly leaves because that's what I was pulling out of here. I was pulling leaves and different weeds and sow thistle when it was getting brown. And it all broke down because I was watering it. I wanted to keep it alive. So I was hitting it with water as I went through with the hose. And because of that, it broke down and it grew beautiful squash. So that's just amazing. And that's what I'm going to do this year. But I am going to top it. I want to top it and get him full because there was only four inches of nothing in there and it was all growing. So that's what's going on with the wall. Where's the bathtub? There's the bathtub. Why did my bathtub get moved there? We'll get to that in a second. Here is the truck bed. I heard that Gary's been working on it. I saw him the other day out here. Look at this. He loaded the whole top with wood chips and he cleaned it up a little bit. He said, I can do what I want with it. I can pull out all my Swiss chard because I was thinking of trellising it and putting some beautiful squash and stuff here. But here's the thing. I have three varieties of Swiss chard growing in here. I have red, green, and then a red and green blend. I have a hard time pulling it out and taking this all out and composting it because this is the best Swiss chard on the property, not counting Gary's garden who gets massive leaves, but it's, it's not being bothered by anybody. I see the fly catchers, the birds hanging out here and they must be catching insects so there's, and taking insects off. There's no insects on any of these. The rabbits last year managed to get in here and have babies in here, but nothing's touching it. Nothing has been disturbing it. So I have a really a dilemma right now as to what I'm going to do. I don't know. I think I'm going to put some nice containers or maybe some fancy floral pots on top and I could still grow zucchini, but maybe not disturb the Swiss chard, but put some floral pots or containers on top. See, I've got a few, like this is all growing in a container. It's already set root in here. And grow with it. Because I really don't want to take this apart. I really like this. Maybe I'll put some kale out here. No, not here. I won't put kale next to it. But maybe somewhere around, around it, not in the truck bed. Why? Why do I not want to put kale in there? I was standing out here the other day. I came out the other evening at six o'clock at night and I remembered I hadn't made a green drink. So I came out here because this is what I pick. I know I have a nice variety and then I can go through the yard and get kale and, and red vein sorrel and green sorrel and celery leaves and all different things collared I put into my green drink that I make. And believe you me, it gives me a lot of energy. And when I don't drink it, I can feel it. And I was standing here at the truck bed and I kind of moved over. I was going over. I was starting to go over to the tubs here. And this, you could hear something loud coming through, kind of like a horse, you know, really. It was kind of loud because this is all wood chips and leaves and stuff. I turn around and there's a big thing sitting right here. I look at it. It's dark. I think, well, that's not a coyote. And thank goodness it's not a mountain lion because that was my other thought. And I thought, is this a Great Dane or Lab? It's too big. So I come over here and while I'm standing here, I realize within seconds, this is all your brain is working in seconds, it's a deer. The deer must have been foraging up there with all that grass that's coming in. And then another deer comes out and I thought I saw another deer. I literally, I was standing feet from the deer. I said, please don't leave. I didn't have a cell phone on me. I didn't have a camera. I didn't come out here to do anything but grab some greens from the truck bed. I said, please don't leave. 
and I ran back to the house so fast and grabbed my camera, came flying out, and I didn't see them at first. So I walked up the trail here, and when I got to the trail, they were just standing under the trees, and then they slowly moved up. And I walked with them that whole trail. I walked in there all the way with them, and there were six that I saw. And I got them on video. It's on that short little five-minute video I put up. Six. I have never seen six in our yard, but this was the trail. This is what Gary cut out and made a hiking trail through here because you had to climb this hill. And they were among the trees and it was just beautiful. The buck who didn't have horns at this time or antlers, I should say, because they lose them hey guys. in winter. And by okay. the beginning of February, they're gone. So they weren't running. I didn't have to worry about them attacking me or anything because their breeding season is over. They breed in the fall and you don't want to mess with deer in the fall. Um, he just stood there and he watched me. Felt like a scene out of Bambi. But anyways, he just stood there watching me and I thought, wow, it's so cool, he's watching me. If this is not the most beautiful thing I have seen on my property, I don't know what to say. Three deer came, four. Oh my gosh, it's four deer. Okay, I'm wrong, there's five. I wonder if they eat the top of my apple tree. Okay, this was luck that they actually waited for me to get my camera. But he wasn't watching me. What he was doing was he was waiting for his herd, which was probably some doe and maybe some last year's fawns, come to him and once they reached the top of the hill, they just moseyed off. And I thought if I climb up to the top of that hill and follow them and I fall down that hill and now it's dark, Gary will have no idea where I was because I would never, never be hiking up there at night. But it was, I got what I wanted. I was so excited and so happy. I have seen one here many, many, many years ago. And then I think it was last year or the year before two came through while I was sitting out here. I was actually sitting under the tree and they popped out and they actually startled me for a second because they're so big and the ears are so massive. But it was beautiful to see and no, I didn't have a camera when the two came out. And that was it. We've seen periodically one maybe zip by or something, but that was amazing. So again, why is the bathtub here? Well, when Gary and I came out here, we looked it over and he said, you know, there used to be a horse trough years ago up on top. He said, maybe I should put a trough here. And I said, well, do you want my bathtub? And he goes, you don't want it? And I said, no, that's okay. I can do something with the bathtub. I, so he brought the bathtub here, chained it to the back of his truck, and he drove it here. And he's got all kinds of plans for it. He's going to fix this up. We can grow some nice plants here. He wants to put some sort of barrier here so if coyotes came down, they could smell them and hear them because we have to keep that in mind. We don't want to make a coyote trap. So something so they can dash back into the hills and then plants around it. And here is where I can put their kale that they like, or I should say, yes, the dinosaur kale. Different things that they like, maybe get some more greens and some certain flowers that they like. And maybe that will keep them to graze through here and come through here, get something they want to eat. Cause I don't think they stay around that long. And then they can go back and hopefully they won't think about going into my garden because they're going to the front of the house, but I don't know where else they're going, but you know what? Let me tell you something. I know some people think I'm crazy because I know how many people have terrible, terrible luck with deer and it gets into their garden. I'm a city girl born and raised in the city of Los Angeles and felt at times out of place because I was more interested in wildlife and animals than I really, really was in anything else. I would have been, if I lived on a property like this in seventh heaven, I mean, I would find a mouse and bring a mouse home, which frightened my dad. <laughs> I would do all kinds of stuff. I even went to my dad's work when I was little. My dad was so excited. Oh, his daughter wants to go to his work. Well, the reason I wanted to go to his work is because the office that he was sitting in had a wall like this and it was covered in lizards. So when I would go to his work, I would be running out there and I would be with the lizards. And then he was, he used to work at a pickle factory. So he would go do truck jobs up north. I would go with him, not because I was interested in the pickles <laughs> and the cucumbers, because they had a field of horses. 
And so I would take off. He was too busy packing and having the trucks loaded with pickles, or I should say cucumbers. And I was gone. I remember coming back one time and the man said to me that worked on the farm, where were you? Oh, I was playing with the horses in the back. And he goes, what horses? I said, those two. And he goes, they bite. Oh, I said, well, they didn't bite me. But I would just, I was animal crazy. So animal crazy. So to see deer, it's, it's exciting. And would they bother me if they ate up my garden? I would just figure out how not to let them do it. So that's the story that I bored you with right now. But I do love animals and I just think it's absolutely wonderful that they would come down while I was here working on the truck bed and not even care that I was here. Show no fear of me. And it was like, ah, it's her. Who knows? I come out here a lot and I'm watering my trees at night. Here's my two apple trees I planted from seed. And there is a loquat and here's the avocado that's still doing good. You know, maybe they see me all the time because I've heard noises down here. And I thought it was birds or who knows what making noises in the evening. But it may have been them the whole time and they might have figured out, eh, she's just part of the environment. So I don't know, but I enjoy it. So that's it. That's what the garden tour is. And want to set up an area here that I could sit. That table was up against the wall and I looked at that table and thought, Gary found that in the trash. No, nah, I threw some paint on it that I get at the hardware store. They have those samples that people return. They sell them for 50 cents. Just slapped some paint on the bottom, got rid of all the, I don't know, there was advertisements and stuff on it. Uh, my neighbor gave me this. She called me and said, I've got a bench I don't want. This is wonderful. I might hit this with some paint. And we'll set this area up because this is just such a beautiful place to sit. The hummingbirds have nests in here. The wrens nest here. You saw the wrens had babies here last year. It's so full of life, this tree. And this tree almost died. Gary was going to take it out. We lost half of it many years ago when we first moved here. And he said it was a matter of time to get somebody in here to take the tree out, the California pepper tree. But when he brought in the wood chips and they were piled here, I, you probably remember the large, large mountains of wood chips. It, the tree came back to life. Even though half of it on the other side snapped off, it just came back to life. Probably helped also that my daughter had a couple birthday parties here for my grandkids with water slides that were set up here too. And it really got a lot of water and the wood chips at the same time. So all the wood chips broke down. Remember, if you've got wood chips, even if you flag down a tree trimmer who was mulching up the wood chips, uh, the, uh, the bark and, and the branches and everything, he was working, and you brought home some bags and bags of wood chips, when you hit him with water, that's when it breaks down. Remember, water is life. So is oxygen. But water is life, and that breaks it down. So that's what this tree did, and that's why we have that tree. Okay, this is a long garden tour. A few of you have been complaining that my videos have been too short. Now I'm gonna get the complaints that the video was too long. Don't worry, I've got a lot more to say and they won't be short. I just been, my head is like, I've got so many things I wanna do little videos on. So I'm trying to get all that. And I hope this year to even put up more videos and give people more ideas or at least to spark an interest. And even if I give you a seed, a tiny seed to think about, seeds grow. And that's what I'm hoping. I tell you something, you go, eh, She's crazy, that's not gonna work. And then you go, wait a minute, I can do it this way instead of it that way, this way, and it's gonna work. And that's what I want. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. I'm not doing it the right way. I'm doing things that work for us, work for me. Gary's got his own things that work for him. And that's what we all have to do. We all have to do what works for us and make it easy. Because if you don't make it easy and it's complicated and hard labor, you will, in the long run, end up not doing it. Because at times when, when you become, uh, you know, come involved in something that you really think you like, but there's so much labor and there's so much lifting, and there's so much moving and there's so much care. When you've got all that, that's when you turn around one day and say, nah, I think I'll go do something else. That's just too much work. Make it easy, make it fun, make it something you enjoy and you will do it forever. And you'll inspire other people too. Have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye everybody. Bye.